Now, with the number of the country's COVID-19 infections over the 2,000 mark, scientists and many other experts are all racing to find the best medicines, the best vaccines to treat the disease. The South African Health Products Regulatory Authority's chairperson is Professor Helen Rees, one of the researchers working on South Africa's response to the outbreak. She's talking to us via Skype. Professor, thanks for joining us. So part of the solidarity trial of four possible treatments, I read, what exactly are we doing in South Africa? Well, there are a number of studies now emerging in South Africa because uh, we're, we're very lucky in that we have some really world-class scientists and research sites that are able to do them. So as you say, Solidarity is one study that's currently being reviewed. Um, and that's looking at four different types of treatment. But there are other studies that will be coming into the pipeline soon that will be looking at different uh, therapies that might prevent infection um, and also uh, moving into a little bit more into the future vaccine trials as well. What exactly are you looking for? Well, we're looking for different things. The, the first priority, uh, because this disease, as you know, is, is a deadly disease and makes people very sick for a long time, uh, we're looking for treatment. And we're looking for treatment that will uh, that either uh, shorten the course of disease or shorten severity, but also treatment that will save lives. So that's one thing. The second thing, though, is we're looking for therapies that can protect people, either from infection or, again, from, from infection that causes severe disease. And then we're looking particularly for, for vaccines, because that's going to be the solution in the medium to long term here. The worst thing you can ask a researcher, I imagine, is what progress, but I think you would acknowledge that every single person involved in this process is acutely aware of the timeline. Yes, and uh, I mean, as I say, across the country, we've got many of our top, top academics and clinicians involved in various pieces of research now. The important thing about progress is that some of these studies are, uh, are being done globally. So solidarity is being coordinated by the World Health Organization. Um, other studies are coordinated by big global networks together. And by doing this globally with many countries involved and many uh, researchers involved, we're hoping to get answers in months instead of what might have usually been years. This can be frustrating, though. I don't think I need to tell our viewers that uh, you're well-versed in trials. Many of the trials that you've been involved haven't succeeded. Many have. Um, very frustrating. Well, I think it's the nature of clinical research. You don't put drugs or vaccines into a clinical trial unless there's something that indicates to you that you think it's going to work. And that's often uh, indications from the laboratory. It can be indications from animal models. But in the case of vaccines and some of these therapies, for example, we're also looking to other coronavirus infections to see what was learned there. And can we take lessons from those infections like MERS and SARS, take what looked promising there and bring them in here. So we don't do these trials unless we think that there's a reasonable prospect of things working. But we recognize that, that some things are not going to work. And that's why you have to do a proper clinical trial that's properly controlled and to a very high standard and ethically regulated. And if you don't do it that way and you do it on an ad hoc basis, you can't prove anything. And what we need to do as quickly as possible is to prove what is going to be beneficial. Professor, forgive the simplicity of my questions, but you use words like uh, looks promising and indications. When would you and your colleagues know uh, that you have achieved something where there, where, where there might be a breakthrough, something that will get you excited? Well, if you look at the design of these studies, clearly uh, people don't want to wait if you are looking, for example, with solidarity at four different treatments and one treatment is clearly not working at all, then you don't want to continue that. And if one treatment is an astounding success, you don't want to keep on with a trial just for the sake of it. You want to have a design of a trial that allows you to, to pull out the failures and pull out the successes as quickly as possible. So all of these studies are being designed so that where we do start to see successes, that we can as quickly as possible sort of bring that forward. Um, and uh, if we are lucky and we get either therapies or vaccines, that we get them into manufacture as quickly as possible. So is it, is it possible to fast track trials or do you have to observe uh, certain prescribed protocols in this respect? 
You have to um, uh, uh, um, observe the prescribed protocol. That's completely correct. That's because that's the sort of recipe. And if you deviate from the recipe and everybody and all the sites deviate, then you can't conclude. So the recipe, the protocol is extremely important and, and it has to be strictly adhered to. And all of the ethical requirements have to be very strictly adhered to as well. But what we're seeing around the world and the same is happening in South Africa is that groups such as SAPRA, the regulatory authority and the ethics committees are really going the extra mile to approve things as quickly as possible, dialoguing with researchers before they submit protocols so that they can be aware of things that might be a concern to regulators and ethics committees. Um, but globally, uh, everyone is uh, pulling out stops that we've never seen before. I've never seen speed like this before in any of these the trials of this nature. Often big trials like this can take literally years to plan and implement. This is being done in, in weeks and months. It's unprecedented, the speed at which this is happening. How often are you all talking to each other? <laughs> I think we'd probably say probably too often. I, I mean, it really is, um, w w in the planning stages, there's often daily daily calls with different groups, different groups looking at different things, um, and, uh, it, and it depends where you are in the planning. Uh, but it's happening on a daily or second daily basis and you can have subgroups talking. So people are talking virtually continuously every 24 hours. Just a final question, uh, Professor. I understand that one of the uh, drugs under investigation or is, is the use of this anti-malarial drug, uh, chloroquine. Is, is that... How much hope do we lend to that that seems to have got a lot of play, for instance, as you're well aware, in the United States of America? Is that a thing? It's certainly a thing to investigate. Um, there have been small studies um, with, um, and the nature of the study designs that have been done were not, it wasn't possible to conclude. But from looking in the laboratory, looking at how chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine work in in cells um, and looking at how uh, some other studies from other coronaviruses and looking at small studies from China, there's an indication that this is certainly worth looking at. But it, there's pretty unanimous uh, conclusion amongst people looking at all the data that we don't have enough data to make any firm conclusion. And what we need to do is to put medicines like this that look hopeful into proper clinical trials as quickly as possible. And that's why this is being evaluated in the solidarity trial. Professor Rees, uh, strength to your work. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, Professor Helen Rees via Skype from the South African Health Products Regulatory Authority.